Thank you for joining us again for another episode of AJ and 8. Last week I mentioned that Pacific Gas and Electric cut power to hundreds of homes in Danville and Arinda in a plant outage. Remember that? They were working on wildfire prevention stuff and I got a lot of questions and comments saying, you know, too bad they didn't have solar or solar plus storage and things like that. Um, you know, bet they would have been okay, right? And one of the things that people fail to realize is that during a power outage, a solar system stops operating so that it'll prevent the backflow of energy. And they do this to ensure that the utility linemen that are potentially working on the lines, especially like in this case, are protected. They don't want any of that excess power that you are producing in your solar system to be sent back. So this was the case for hundreds of Californians who had their electricity shut off despite having solar. And some of the Californians who had solar plus storage also saw their electricity cut off just like their neighbors. And that's, that's the frustrating part, right? I mean, you invest money in something that is going to help you save money and all this stuff. But I think, you know, people that are doing this, you know, when, when homeowners invest in solar, and especially when they invest in solar plus storage, they're seeking resiliency, right? Remember, we talked about that resiliency, the ability to keep the power on, right? Keep the lights on, keep the refrigerator cold, all that type of stuff, right? They want to maintain power in their home or in their business in the event of a power outage. So the right equipment is absolutely critical when you start to design these systems. And really, that can help determine whether or not a microgrid or a nanogrid can isolate from the grid. So one of the key components to allow systems to island itself in times of power outages, and this is something if, if you're going to invest in solar or so, and solar plus storage. I mean, many of you have solar already. If you're looking to add a battery to your system, you need to ensure and ask the installer, does this system, does this energy storage system, does this battery, does this solution that you're putting on, does it have an automatic transfer switch? I mean, it sounds really simple and it kind of is, but I can guarantee you 90% of the systems that are installed in California, it's not what they do. I've seen thousands of systems that just work just like how they were set up. Solar produces power, battery stores the power, but it's not necessarily meant to isolate itself and island itself so that your power can continue to flow if the power shuts off. So a transfer switch, what it does is it isolates the system from the utility and allows the microgrid or the nanogrid to continue to provide backup power to the home or to the business during these outages. So the microgrid then, you know, it allows power that is generated or stored and or stored to provide power to the home without backfeeding into the grid. Remember, like we were talking about, so you're not going to harm any of the utility people that are out there working and then when the outages end the grid power is available and the transfer switch reconnects allowing the power to flow to and from the grid and then you're good now in some cases other equipment may be necessary including a non-export relay and that just kind of provides an added redundancy for the utility but you know i would definitely make sure that as you look to add storage to your solar system. Make sure whoever you talk to understands that you want the system to island itself. And ask them if they're gonna have an automatic transfer switch included. Now, some systems out there, some energy storage systems out there already have it included. Uh, Sonnen is a great system, expensive, but I mean, you're talking that is definitely the Cadillac of the bunch. Um, if you're looking at doing a Tesla, Teslas definitely have the opportunity to island itself. There are some pros and cons to all of the different energy storage systems out there. So make sure that you talk to somebody that really understands how these systems work. I know a lot of these solar installers, I mean, there's thousands of them all throughout California. And many of them understand solar. But when you start to include solar plus storage and you have 
a 10 kWh battery, there's definitely some other equipment that you're going to need because I can tell you right now, a 10 kWh battery is not going to be able to keep your entire house powered. So in some cases, you're going to need what they call an essential loads panel, which allows you know some of the important things to, to be put on a smaller panel so that it continues to operate. Um, there's other controls that could be included to help be able to manage loads and shift loads to and from different parts of operations. And I think that's the opportunity that you have to be able to really make sure that the people that are installed in your systems really understand what they're doing. Uh, I think that there's also opportunities for you to look at how much batteries you're putting in. I know a lot of people on our side, we usually put at least 20 kWh of batteries on a development that we're doing, we're actually putting 40 kWh of batteries. And, you know, we have our specific reasons for doing it on this particular uh, development, but we want to make sure that we create the resiliency that these homes need. This, this particular development is for United States veterans, and we want to make sure that the entire homes are not only resilient, but that they can also be an asset and a resource to the grid as well. So those are the different things that you really need to make sure that you talk to your installers and your integrators about, making sure that they understand that one of your biggest reasons for doing this, especially in this time, you know, while many of us are working from home, many of our families are at home for extended periods of time, we want to make sure that if they ever do come in, whether it's planned or unplanned, we want to make sure that when the utility does have to cut off the power, that we are all in a position to be able to keep the lights on, keep the refrigerator cold, to keep computers on here and there, to keep some lights on, just to make sure that safety is, is of a high priority for all of us. So you guys hear me talk about microgrids a lot. That's, that's exactly what is necessary before, during, and after these types of tragedies. So again, I would recommend you guys go out there and make sure that you talk to your installers, talk to your integrators, talk to these people that are going to be installing these systems and really make sure that they know your number one reason for installing this next to savings should be resiliency. I'll see you guys again next week on AJNA. Take care. Aloha.